Shining some light on your perineum is a thing. This is the Focus Group. It's the savvy side of 9 to 5. Listen. Bueller. 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 Laugh. <laughs> and learn. Negotiation. This is what you do in business. This is the Focus Group with Tim Bennett. S-T-A-U-N-C-H. And John Nash. Keep your clothes looking neat and clean. We're all business. Except when we're not. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Focus Group. We're storming to the holidays. It's uh, December 18th. This is Tim Bennett with my good friend and co-host, Mr. John T. Nash. And uh, we're sorry to say, I guess we're sad to say, this is our, our last video show of the year. Yeah, we'll have some stuff during... Which you can announce toward the end of the show, but but uh, this is our last on set, but otherwise we're going to have new content, but audio, which will remind many of you of our, our podcast, which is every Tuesday. Uh, Tuesday morning called TFG Unbuttoned, and then, of course, runs as audio uh, on Saturdays with this show as well. So uh, thanks for joining us, and I hope everybody is have all their holiday shopping done and is storming storming through the new year to get, get to 2020. Here's the SAT word for this holiday year. Truncated. Truncated. Shrunk. So we only have three weeks between Thanksgiving and Christmas, and everybody's going crazy. So it's push, a push, truncated push. season. And... Next year, I think we have a leap year. Oh, we do? Yeah, I think that in 2020, February has 29 days. So it's, uh, we're a leap year, right? Is that right, guys? I, I'm pretty sure. Yes. Right? Yeah, so it's a leap year. It'll be a good day to get married on. You don't have to celebrate once every three years. <laughs> in fact, you only have your anniversary, right? Wouldn't it be good? That's a great idea. <laughs> yes. You know, my uh, oldest niece, I think, is, I, I have to confirm it, but I'm pretty sure she and her fiancé set on... 10 10 2020 as their wedding and date so it's october 10th 2020, 2020. 10, i like 10, that 2020 i just thought it was funny when she announced I'm guessing it, yeah. 10 10 was probably a friday or a saturday it's a good idea october well i don't yeah that's a great point actually i don't think that and 10, i honestly don't know if they care about the the 10 10 part you know they just wanted to be 10 10 and 2020, 2020 something yeah. easy to remember so we've got uh of course as always our boys in the booth garrett and steve who's who's with you today Today we got Luby with us. Luby. Hello. Well, Garrett, what are you doing? Putting your little holiday hat on? I'm trying to. <laughs> failing miserably at putting it You're his failing hat miserably? On. He's going to need it. There you go. Hat. Look at how good you look there now. There we go. You know, we have those hats somewhere, John. Yeah, I don't know where they are. We had, we, had, we had hat making once one year at one of our holiday parties. Yeah. What is, what's that you got? All right. So, our, our listener from Fort Worth, Texas has sent the radio, the focus group radio team, which includes have we found out who this is yet. Booth. No, I have a suspicion, but even when he sends me emails to focus group radio letters at focus group radio, and by the way, send us your comments. Is it thoughts. anonymous? Or he does it in a way that you can't. There, it's from. I wonder who it is. But I will say the handwriting is gorgeous, so I'm going to open the card. So they must be of a certain age. <laughs> Nobody does cursive anymore. Look at that. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Dear Focus Group Radio team, may your season be happy. May your traditions be shared with those you love. And may the year ahead be filled with joy. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Your Fort Worth fan. Scott Greenstein from Sirius XM. That was awful nice. <laughs> there you go. So, guys, here's the embarrassment of riches that we've been sent from Oh, my Texas. goodness. So, there are a bunch of... What are those? These M&Ms? are M and M's. Oh, the, the, the holiday M and M's. Let's yeah. make a little tableau here. That'd be nice. Okay, we'll set it up. Yeah. yeah. So M and M's, cool. Bean boozled. Oh, hey, it's the. Uh, oh, from our friends. Uh, at, Jelly uh, Belly. Jelly Belly. You know, by the way, our friend Jenna there. She got a new gig. She's working at uh, University of California system now. Oh, she was the Jelly uh, Belly. She was. Ooh, a look, look, look! Junior Peppermints Crunch. I love those. And I'm going to, guys, I'm sorry to say I'm keeping it because guess who's on this one? It's uh, Kylo Ren from Yoda? Star Wars. It's was a Star, it? Star Wars jelly belly. I that was Darth Vader. Yeah, well, it's kind of his grandson, you know. Oh, I wouldn't know. <laughs> I wouldn't know. All right, let's see what we got. Peppermint Bark Oreo. Oh, I've not seen Garrett those. made a face. Garrett made a face. Garrett, okay. what do you think? Have you tried those before? I hate minty dessert. I'm not brushing my teeth for dessert. You don't like minty dessert? Nope. No, no fudge-covered Oreos either? He might like those. You know what, Garrett? I was looking for you for um, the birthday cake ones that you like, the Oreos. Are they the vanilla ones or the chocolate ones? I, mean, like, I like both, but I like vanilla. The vanilla, yeah. yeah the vanilla are hard to find. Yes. Tim, Tim, Tim. 
from Fort Worth fan, Red yeah, Vine. Red Vine. See, now you know I'm a Twizzlers fan, but I will do a Red Vine. You like a Red Vine. I might even open that up right now. Now, here's one white fudge covered Oreos, right? I don't like white chocolate. <laughs> Boy, there's a lot of things that people are like, I'm not hearing. But... Oh, and Tim, for you. <laughs> Twizzlers. Twizzler bites. That's my favorite thing. Look at this. This is, a, this is an All embarrassment these bites of are riches. Delicious. You know, these bites are cherry, so they're not the strawberry ones. They're different. Ferrero Rocher, he is doing well. I love these things, the Ferrero Rochers. He is doing well. This is a mix, though, Tim. This There's a bunch of flavors. There's the traditional, it looks like a dark chocolate and a mint one. Like, wow. Or white chocolate. This is really an awful nice thing. We've. I really wish we could thank this person. Have we ever sent them socks? I think they got socks, yeah. What are those, what are those okay. candy canes? Two flavors of candy canes. There's Lifesaver Butter Rum. Oh, that's interesting. I love butter. And the Oreos candy canes. <laughs> so for our show, in honor of our Fort Worth listener, here we do this, you do this, you, you kind of put one on top of the other, yeah. We will have a merry little holiday here. So thank, thank you to our, thank our, our you listener Fort in Worth. Fort Worth. And you know, thank you to all our Texas listeners over the, the last, and we're going into our 12th or 13th year in March. 13th year. Yep. Uh, our biggest market, our biggest listener uh, listenership audience is in Texas. So thanks to all our Texas fans out there. Who'd have ever thought? It goes Texas, I think New York, California, PA, Florida. Yeah, I think are the top top so five top states. One. And aren't you happy with? Oh your my licorice? god, I want to open these now, but I, I got to put them. I have to display them. I don't know if. Do these show up on the on the camera? Oh, yeah, guys? look, look, look. We have look at this. Oh, okay. A bonanza of Christmas chocolates from Texas. Well, thank you to our Fort Worth listener who I. I will forward you the email that I, I know is coming from him, but you'll see why you can't. It's well, thank you, Fort Worth listener, and, and call us sometime, and maybe you do call us and we don't know. <laughs> so what, uh, what caught your eye this week? What caught your eye? Here's what Tim and John found. Okay, so last week, last week and a little bit of the earlier week, we had a series of deaths that... Um, kind of were surprising to me and 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 I'll just I'll just say what one headline said it's been a rough week for Star Trek fans so there have been a number of people that have passed that have been part of the Star Trek universe and I'll I want to talk about one a woman in particular but um, first it was DC Fontana also known as Dorothy Fontana she was a story editor for the original series and the franchise's trailblazing first female writer she died at 80 a few days later, an actor named Robert Walker Jr., who starred in one of the very first episodes of Star Trek that Fontana wrote, actually, called Charlie X, he passed away at the age of 79. And then just uh, over the weekend, Marina Sirtis, who plays uh, Counselor Deanna Troy on The Next Generation, her husband passed away in his sleep, but he, so that's a, that's kind of a off the trail Star Trek death. And then lastly, uh, Rene Aubergenois, who played Odo on the series. Say that again, John. Rene what? Rene Aubergenois. Aubergenois. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's like on the Adams family when, when Morticia <laughs> would say something in French. Or, or, it, 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 oh, and he would say, oh, you spoke French. He'd go crazy. <laughs> he was best known for portraying, portraying the actor Odo on Deep Space Nine. Um, and he was only 79 as well. Oh, I'm sorry, wait, uh, 79, did I get that right? Do you think it's just a coincidence? I don't know. I mean, uh, Rene Aubergenois passed away from a form of cancer. DC Fontana, I think, had a brief illness then passed. Uh, it might have been pneumonia. And then Robert Walker was only really connected to Star Trek through the episode he played this this troubled teen called Charlie Exxon. But you and I were talking about this. These cluster things happen sometimes, right? I had one in, when I was in co college, which was weird. My college advisor, Dr. Artell, my rowing coach, Coach Linda Mood, and the house mother, Mom Stewart, all died within a day of each other. Is that weird? And they were all three people throughout my college career that was very much, um, very much part of it. But it was weird. It was boom, 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 all over a Friday to a Saturday. And I, th I don't know. Is, is that just coincidence? I think it is. I think it is. You know. I, I mean, especially with this Star Trek stuff, it's. Well, they always say things happen in threes, right? <laughs> well, you said that to me the other day. You had a, I was a for bolt, my third thing to break. A bolt the size of New Jersey was in your tire, and then something else happened, and then you're just like, I'm waiting for the, the third. internet. The internet, the internet went, down. went out with thank you Xfinity, and then um, and then my printer I couldn't. Yeah, get then, you, then you figured out. Thank you, YouTube. But then it's still going because I had a couple of other issues. Talk about another time. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, 
the one thing I wanted to mention, though, is that D.C. Fontana is a trailblazer, the woman who passed away at ADB. And she's called D.C. because back when she was starting to write on serialized television, it was not necessarily a woman's game. So she wanted to go by the name D.C. Fontana, but her real name's Dorothy. And it says here... As a woman working in television in the 60s, especially in science fiction, Fontana was a trailblazer. She both wrote for and produced Star Trek while being credited as DC Fontana, keeping her gender a secret until her photograph appeared in Stephen Whitfield's book, The Making of Star Trek, in 1968. So she only was revealed to be a woman in 68 after the show was off the air, and it was during a, it was a book thing. So uh, she also wrote for Questar, um, the Questar tapes, which I love. Logan's Run, I doubt you remember. Uh, <laughs> I remember it. I didn't watch it. The ABC Afternoon Play Break, and and she taught and spoke at the American Film Institute as a as a lecturer and um, as a teacher. So she had a big hand in Star Trek, though. She was kind of tangentially involved in all the series behind the scenes, and she was a good friend of Gene Roddenberry, who was the creator. So there we go, three three sad passings, plus Marina Sirtis, Consort Troy's husband, dying in his sleep, which is... Your childhood is dying in front of your eyes, John. The hidden theme. <laughs> yeah. No, that's the hidden theme, right? Our past is no, it literally evaporating in front of our eyes, right? Sad, sad, sad. sad. I don't know what to do about it. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Mine could not be any more different. Of course, this came from our listeners. If you have any uh, items you'd like us to use for caught, uh, caught My Eye, please send them along. This one came from a listener, friends of ours in Rehoboth. So Mark sent me this, of mm-hmm. Mark and Carl in Rehoboth Beach. And the headline is, and I had to look it up to say it correctly, the perineum sunning. So apparently this perineum sunning is a thing. Is a thing as we said at the opening. It's uh, where you expose your, and I'm just going to read the quote, where you, this perineum sunning is when you expose your bum hole to the sunlight to boost vitamin D. So this has taken the wellness world by storm, and it's the latest health, uh, the latest health enthusiast and biohacker Dave Asprey has been trying it out. He's also the guy that uh, made famous uh, keto coffee, which I've not done, but you put butter in your coffee. People say that's good. Have you ever had butter that? in your coffee? Yeah. Hmm. So he's done that. He's also done uh, other health health benefits, and uh, such as getting sunlight on your testes. He said is good for increasing testosterone. He says shock therapy is also good for having stronger uh, erections. He's tried all these things. So he's trying okay. this sunny thing. The problem is people are getting sunburned. Yeah. And they said that even though this trend is proven risky, you see lots of people, particularly on private beaches, uh, trying to do this. Recently, Josh Brolin admitted that he burned his pucker hole (laughs) while he was experimenting the sunning. He said it was burned so bad he felt like he ate too many jalapenos. (laughs) I just... (laughs) It's the area between the anus and the vagina. I always thought that was called the taint, the perineum. Right, Garrett? Don't you agree? The gooch. The taint. Oh, I never heard the gooch. Have you heard the gooch? I've never heard yeah. the gooch. I've never ever heard the gooch. Oh my. Have you? No. No. Thank you, Garrett. You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. Steve, you you heard of the gooch? Oh yeah. Really? Gooch We're... is the first one I've ever heard. You never heard of the taint? The first one you ever heard. Okay. Oh, I heard taint gooch. too. But well, yeah. I know you did, Garrett. Not too yeah. much you haven't heard. <laughs> <laughs> so wait a minute, wait a minute. I had read about Josh Brolin going, uh, being, I don't know how long he was out for, but it was enough that he was almost a hospital visit. It yeah. was so painful, right? Well, they're up there. You saw pictures, if you're watching on their video, people are laying there nude with their hooches. I, I, some of them I couldn't post because they, they're all out in their glory. So could I just debunk this? Look at her. Could I just debunk this for a guys. second? Yeah. We absorb, the natural way you get vitamin D is from sunlight. Right. And it's to expose skin. It doesn't matter if it's your perineum or your hand or an arm. It, it, there's no benefit that you would get vitamin D from. I can't even believe people think this is a thing. It's fun for boys and girls. <laughs> I, I'm not going for a girl and a boy. Gonna, I'm not going to do it, but apparently it's a thing. I tell you this, if, if, you, if I'll come down to visit you at the beach and I'll set up on the beach and I'll you do it, we'll be arrested in like two seconds flat. It will be a board, beach. boardwalk. Yeah, a little sen- beach, you might be okay. Boardwalk sensation. In fact, I want to be across from the arcade that has that cool thing that we love, the horse race, that you throw the balls and it makes well, the horses grow. You know, proud. that's a good point. Since Mark and Carl sent this, maybe they can set up a perineum booth. <laughs> perineum booth. 
<laughs> teach people how to teach people how to do it. Sit there and spread it's just, your man spread. But honest to God, I had a uh, a physical recently, my annual physical, and I said to my doctor, with the approach of winter, should I be taking a vitamin D supplement? No, you get enough vitamin D in your vegetables, your food, and, and he goes, and from the sun. I'm like, yeah, but I'm skin's covered. He goes, he I just, had a vitamin D deficiency. But you have an actual deficiency? Yeah, and so and I took, I don't know if I haven't had tested lately, but I do take a vitamin D pill. They said a lot of people have vitamin D deficiency. Yeah, and it's also a mood, uh, it can affect your mood being deficient. Oh, really? Yeah. That's it, my problem. <laughs> is that what makes you like Oscar the Grouch? Is that... I've been like that forever. <laughs> I don't think that's vitamin D. <laughs> Business birthday. Everyone does celebrity birthday greetings. But the Focus Group is the only show in the universe that celebrates business birthdays. I had trouble finding a business birthday today, and then I mentioned this guy to John. John's like, "That's the birthday. That's the one." Mm-hmm. Stephen Allen Spielberg. There you go. That's a t- you talk about someone who has transformed cinema. There's Stephen. Right. Spielberg. So uh, he's 73 today, born December 18th, 1946. An American filmmaker, of course, considered one of the founding pioneers of the new Hollywood era and one of the most popular directors and producers in film industry. He's also an American icon. I mean, he's very much in that. Yeah. That pantheon of great Americans up there with probably Carson and Oprah and and uh, well, and, 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 and the, all those in the pantheon of, of directors, he's up there with Francis Ford Coppola, George Lucas. Yeah. I mean, he has single-handedly put billions of dollars in studios' pockets. Well, so. They said he started out directing, which a lot of people do, directing television and some minor uh, theatrical releases. But he became a household uh, name when he did Jaws back in '75. And then subsequent releases, when you hear this portfolio, it's just crazy. It's the Encounters of the th- Close Encounters of the Third Kind, Raiders of the Lost Ark, E.T., Jurassic Park, which he all clustered those in what he called escapist filmmaking. Then he transitioned to address serious issues with The Color Purple, Empire of the Sun, Schindler's List, Amistad, Saving Private Ryan, Munich, Lincoln, Bridge of Spies, and The Post. He founded Amblin Entertainment and DreamWorks Studios, and then he did a series of trilogies for Gremlins, Back to the Future, Men in Black, Transformers. I mean, yeah. think about this list, right? And uh, obviously, well, well-regarded, critically acclaimed, won all kinds of awards. Uh, his net worth, they said, is worth about $3.7 billion, the highest grossing film director in history. Um, he does have a couple hobbies, which I thought were interesting. He collects film memorabilia. So he purchased a balsa rosebud sled from Citizen Kane. From the, the, the one, the yeah, one that he was He purchased okay. that in 1982. He also owns Orson Welles' directorial copy of the script uh, for so the radio broadcast, have his, The War of the notes, Worlds. Like, the War the, of the Worlds. The, then, the script that he bought was... For uh, War of the Worlds, Orson Welles. And the director, it's the director. So that probably has like handwritten Directed notes copy, on yeah. it. Yeah, okay. And then interestingly, and I've, I've seen other people, I've heard other people do this. He purchases Academy Award statuettes that he sees being sold on the open market. And he donates them to the Academy of Motion Pictures to prevent further exploitation, exploitation he says. So far, he's bought uh, Oscars from Betty Davis. Um, Clark Gable and several others. Are you he, serious? Yeah. So he he sees these things on the open market. He buys them and then donates them to uh, to the uh, Academy of Motion Pictures and Arts. He's also a major collector, one of the biggest collectors of Norman Rockwell. Never knew that. Never knew that. It's a collection that. of fifty seven Rockwell paintings and drawings, and uh, he also uh, does that with George Lucas. They said they had their own little exhibition at the Smithsonian uh, several years ago. And he's an avid film buff. He watches as many movies as he can over the weekend. And he's a big gamer ever since he used to play Pong while filming Jaws. <laughs> Seems to find his wife's on set. His first wife, uh, Amy Irving from Close Encounters uh-huh. and currently Cape, uh, hey, Cape Shaw. He met at Indiana Jones and the Temple, Temple of Doom. Doom yep. They have a house in L.A., a house in the Hamptons, a house in New York City, and a house in Naples, Florida. Things are tough. Happy birthday, Steven Spielberg. I'd like to meet him. I think he'd be interesting. I think he'd be super cool. Uh, I think he'd be really cool to meet. And um, Spielberg gave J.J. Abrams, who's the current direct. Well, he's directing uh, Star Wars: The Rise of Sky or the the Rise of Skywalker, and he did The Force Awakens, Super Eight, Star Trek reboot. He created Lost and Alias on TV. But they they found he Spielberg sort of helped uh, mentor J.J. Abrams along seeing a kindred spirit in him but um think of the when you when you ticked off those movies man yeah. those were summer blockbuster and, I, and starting with jaws remember the yeah. first time you ever saw jaws in the theater yeah. remember that that rubber head comes out of the boat like now you look at it and you're like it's so different than the horror films right but that was, that was a scary movie man yeah the music you, yeah. all you do is hear that music 
So, hey, if you're a friend of our show, which we hope you continue to be, the, uh, you know that uh, one of our partners here on the Focus Group is Deep Discount, where they want you to own your passion. John, is Sharky the Shark going to... The puppet's going to return in the new year. In the new year, the puppet's getting a, a do-over, maybe. Possibly, yeah. Possibly. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we're puzzling about the puppet because that green sleeve I had, and you know, we have to we're puzzling. So about there's the some last minute. There's a last minute gift sale going on. So if you've been a little late to the party to get your your holiday gifts, you still have time to uh, to do it through our friends at Deep Discount. Just go to focusgroupradio.com and click on the Deep Discount logo, and start shopping away. What did you pick this week, Mr. Nash? In honor of, uh, let's reverse. We're going to reverse engineer this. So. Uh, the new release this week at Deep Discount is Downton Abbey on Blu-ray, the movie. Downton Abbey, the movie. Um, I'm a big fan of the series. Whenever the news kind of, like, makes me... Doesn't it make you want to burn your hair? <laughs> Was it on at a loop at the house? <laughs> well, then we go right to Amazon Prime, and we... Well, it doesn't matter what season or what show. You're back in time. Things are more gracious. People are polite. And, you know, that kind of thing. So we went to see the movie... I like the movie a lot. I'll tell you, if you haven't seen the movie and you're a big fan of the series, pick it up at Deep Discount. Um, it is kind of like a two-hour TV show. So, to answer your question, the my pick is based off of Downton Abbey, and it's a movie called, I've mentioned it here on the show before, Gosford Park. Yes. So, Gosford Park uh, was won an Academy Award for screenplay, and the man who won that was Julian Fellows, who also created Downton Abbey. So Gosford Park has some of the favorite, uh, it has stars in it that you've seen before. Um, Helen Mirren, Maggie Smith, Bob Balaban, Michael Gambon, Emily Watson, Richard Grant. I mean, these are all, it's a great cast. And it's kind of an Agatha Christie whodunit. In fact, the way Deep Discount describes it, tea at four, dinner at eight, murder at midnight. But it's, it's, it's well done. It's a well done. Um, <laughs> when was that released? What does it say on there? Uh, 2001. 2001, okay. Yeah, and the, uh, the movie is directed by Bob Altman, Robert Altman, who I like a great deal. Um, okay. Cool. So I, um, I picked uh, something very different. You know, sometimes I get in the weeds on the... Uh, yes, you do. <laughs> when I start... In a, good, in a good way. I start searching on the... Start, start searching on the deep... Is that Santa Claus? <laughs> yeah, it's... <laughs> when I start searching on the... Uh, on the uh, the internet, on the sites. So I found I love Etta James. I don't know if you're an Etta James fan. A lot of people aren't. She's had a 60 year career. She's you know since passed, but probably I would say the a raunchier version or a more grittier version of an Aretha Franklin. Really? But um, I love Etta James. And so when I was looking at Deep Discount again, I went I went I I've been tending to go to the hundred top movies that they're doing and so this this came in this is a documentary or concert performance and it's uh it was it was released in 2012 but it's called live at Montreux 1978 to 1993 and it's all of her appearances at the am i saying it right Montreux jazz Montreux, festival correct Montreux french jazz yeah. festival and uh, and then they've put in other. I love that. Am I? Sa I get I get I get slapped around. Well, because I'm using French, but then I'm asked, "Am well, I pronouncing that correctly?" Because I want to know if in case I'm doing <laughs> it wrong. And so then I was when I was there, I thought, you know, I love. So that is obviously the a Blu-ray, and it's uh, it's eighteen so Tim, what is, what, dollars and what, oh eight cents. Where would you? What kind of music dish is it's it? Blues, jazz, blues and jazz. It's blues. You know, she sang at last, which is oh, a famous, sure. famous okay. song. But and it's blues and it's gritty and it's fun and she's a great performer and I love her for that and so there's another thing I've been watching quite a bit it's called Etta James and the Roots Band Burning Down the House on DVD mm. there's actually some clips now they don't have the video out yet I don't know why but I thought if you're going to buy this for somebody you also should pick up for $11.31 because Deep Discount also sells vinyl and sells CDs and music that that's there also and uh, she does some great renditions of some of the old blues tunes that are just a lot of fun. So I had two things, both Etta James, Live at Montreux, which is a video documentary of all her live performances. So Live at Montreux is, it looks like it's almost a 10 or 20 year... Yeah, span of all her great that's performances. That's Blu-ray. That's Blu-ray, and that's video. And then I thought, if you're going to, um, if you're a fan of hers, this Etta James and the Roots Band burning down the house on dvd is fantastic it's all is that audio only or? it's just audio but i thought you can get them as a you know get them as a group to give them to somebody that's a fan if you don't know etta james you should know her she's a she's an american american icon that sometimes doesn't get enough credit i don't think 
So that's well, you know, in the spirit of the deep discount segment, um, that's a discovery thing. I think that's yeah. really cool. I, I, you've mentioned her once or twice before, and you've talked about being a big fan of hers primarily because of her stage presence. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll, you know what? I'm going to have Focus Group Radio. I, I'll do it on our Facebook page. I'll post one of the videos. One of the videos? One of her last performances. And she's sitting because she can't stand because she's, she's ill. But brings it home. I mean, she just lays yeah, it down. I'm always amazed by that with, with singers. Yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. So, and then you mentioned the, you mentioned the, uh, the new release, right? Yeah. Downton Abbey. Downton Abbey. Cost and the Butler, Lady Mary, the Crawleys, the Crawleys. I love it. <laughs> Bring it on. Anyway. Uh, okay. So it is the, uh, last minute gift sale at Deep Discount. Go to Deep Discount by going to our site first, focusgroupradio.com. Click on the shark logo. Arr! He's aptly named Sharky, even though he sounds like a pirate. Okay. <laughs> uh, Tim picked Etta James live at Montro, which is a Blu-ray. It looks like about 15 or 20 years of her performance, uh, background. Yeah. And Etta James music on DVD, also available at, uh, Deep Discount. I picked Gosford Park, which is the uh, prod product of the Oscar-winning screenplay writer Julian Fellows, who then created our release of the week, Down Abbey. What do we say, Garrett? Thanks, Deep Discount. We are going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're stepping in the time machine. I feel like I do that a lot these days, and going back in time. Boy, yeah. Okay, we'll be right back. <laughs> You're listening to The Focus Group with Tim and John. Learn more at focusgroupradio.com. Focus on the savvy side of 9 to 5 with The Focus Group. Try, really try. Listen, laugh, and learn with Tim and John. I never try anything. I just do it. It's amazing. Hey, welcome back to the Focus Group. Tim Bennett here in our little festive holiday set with my good friend and co-host, Mr. John T. Nash. Of course, we got the boys in the booth. It's December 18th. We're storming toward the holiday. And, uh, and a raid in front of us. Right. Our friends, our friend, our friend. Our fan from Fort, from Fort Worth. Worth, Texas, has given us Christmas riches. Oh, my gosh. I know there's somebody. We were Oreos, just deciding what we were going to take. He knows us well. Twizzlers. Yeah, he knows us well. Frere Roger is doing well. Is doing well. Is doing well. So our shop talk today, just the headline says it all for those of you of a certain age. <laughs> it says, coming soon, the international male documentary you never knew you needed. This is for gay men who came of age before the turn of the millennium. The international male catalog holds a special place in their memory. Glossy, risque, and as trashy as it was alluring, it was more than just a way to mail order clothes. It was a cultural touchstone. And who doesn't remember the International Mail? Oh, I was hoping you would keep reading. I thought it was brilliantly written. <laughs> well, no, so the items, they, the items they sold might sometimes have been more than a little tacky. Pirate shirt, anyone? Arr, yeah. The men who were modeling them for us were enough to stir any young gay man's curious uh, boys, any young gay curious boy's imagination in the way that leaves a lasting impression. Got ahead of myself. And then I love this next one. The company behind the, this little gem of gay history disappeared along with the 20th century. <laughs> I almost shed a tear at that. Yeah. <laughs> um, and the world has moved on. There's internet porn now, after all. Still, though, international mail is gone. And the fond memories linger, and a trio of filmmakers is counting on that. They aim to make a documentary telling the story behind the iconic queer catalog, and they're asking for your help to do it. So, when Tim found this article, I, it brought back... Tons of memories because how often in the year did this come? Oh, it came every other day. <laughs> did you, um, did you, got, you guys are a little younger than us, so did you ever remember this catalog? Never. Of course not. <laughs> Would I have ever seen that? Are you serious? <laughs> no, yeah, I've never seen it. Yeah, I've never seen it either. <laughs> You're really? Yeah, never even heard of it. No. Yeah, no. I, I've heard of like Playgirl. That's like the no, closest. No, this, this is just a catalog for clothes. Yeah, and oh, they had. Yeah, no, they know. did have a never. retail store. Yeah, they had and, a store and, in Los Hollywood. Angeles, right, right in Hollywood. Hollywood. Yeah. We used to get it at the frat house, Lambda Chi House at Marietta College. It would disappear quick. I don't know who used to take it. And then I used to get it at work. So not me, but it would come to work. To Subaru. Yeah. And there was another woman there, Sharon, as you know. We could never figure out where it would go. So it would come in in the mail, and she'd leave it in the coffee room. 
and then it would disappear. So she and I did a did a setup one day. We we're going to try to figure out where these were going. And of course, the right wing evangelical in the office, he would he was the one taking it because then we caught him looking at it one day. Snuck up on him. I said, "What are you doing?" Oh, uh, well, wait. So looking for a watch. I said, "A watch? You want the one with the, melted, you want the, one with the melted face or the leather strap?" <laughs> On the on the on the shirtless person. <laughs> now the guys. So in the frat house, there were a couple of guys that were the, the kind of guys that might shop at Chess King. Remember Chess yep, King yep, from the mall? Yep. They would order a couple things, tight tank tops or something with the you know the Long Island body body. But um, I, they, did you ever order anything? Out of I it? ordered uh, yes. So <laughs> oh, this will be good. I think it was a onesie. Early '90s, I ordered two tank tops that I that, that so the model that was wearing them. I thought I, I'm probably similar physique or build. These things come in. I put them on. <laughs> I come out of the bedroom and I said to Bob, I said, "This is for the gym." He goes, "This." He goes, "That's for the garbage." <laughs> were they too? Were they trashy? It, it, you need tight you, or what? You needed to be tits and the pirate. You needed to be. You know, you, you, you didn't, you couldn't be anywhere on the spectrum of having a developed chest unless you were like Schwarzenegger. That, because it was these really thin straps and then it, it was not flattering. It was not <laughs> flattering. You know, and, and if you talked to any, I had seen it. <laughs> you talked to anybody who, who has to buy workout clothes and, and it gives it some thought. As a, one of my instructors said to me one day, he goes, it's all about the drape. How does it drape? How does it hang from the shoulders down? And you don't want things that are too tight at the waist, especially if you're trying to work on that waist. <laughs> Stuff like that, right? So well, I always, I always loved the catalog. But you're right; it was, um, and they were known for their underwear. And then I think they did Undergear. Yeah, Undergear was their sister company or their sibling company. Yeah. So if you're watching on the on the video here, so the the second slide, so that one there, Bruce I, Jenner. Yeah, Bruce Jenner, and I. I well, so now it's uh, Caitlin, Caitlin. But Jenner. it was funny because I looked at him. And I thought, hey, they must have paid him to be on the cover. Oh, yeah. yeah, he got paid. I, mean, I was trying to look to see. He could have found the photo and still paid for the rights to use it. They might not have shot him. He said he had breasts at that age. But I was looking at that. I can't see any breasts. Can you? No. No. Oh. And then the other one on the right there is all the all the uh, the underwear that used to do the lineup. And you're right. Unless you were perfectly. Look at these bodies. Fitted. Yeah. No None hair. The, look good this is so late 90s, early 2000s as well, where the male, the ideal male was someone who was hairless, except they had a full head of hair. <laughs> it's just like, you know, think of the maintenance here. But I, I would go right, when I got, when this catalog came, I'd go right to the underwear. And Bob and I had a little game. We'd try to figure out like who was, who's been airbrushed, who's not, and did any of the pictures get by the airbrusher by accident, and can we see something of a detail? Is any of this stirring anything in you boys in the booth? <laughs> uh, I mean, they look good, but it doesn't. If we had see the, the fourth guy in with the teal boxers? Yes. Yeah. Is that just a wrinkle? <laughs> I don't know. You'd have to zoom or, in. Or is he happy to have the photographer <laughs> photograph? Sometimes they call that what is it, visible, VPI. VPL, visible, visible VPL. panty line, yeah. I don't know. I, I, I looked at that underwear and I thought, is there anything in there that I would wear? I guess maybe a couple. I don't know. I don't like boxers. They get too stuff. They get too uh, jumbly. Yeah. So stuff. Yeah. I remember once, uh, and this is back in the international mail days. Um, I was, you know, my friend Ed. Yeah. Ed and I were at the gym one day, and uh, we we finished. We were we we worked out together, and we're finishing up, and we're in the locker room, and some guy is changing in a locker near us, and. <laughs> He finishes and leaves, and Ed and Ed just looks at me and goes, he goes, I know where he shops. I said, where does he shop? The International Mail Catalog. I mean, he had, like, <laughs> long-type underwear and stuff, and here I am wearing, like, I think it was Hanes briefs or something terribly You know, Matt, boring. my friend Mackie get yeah. away. He used to wear those sort of things. But he, he had the body. He was he a had the body model. for it, yeah. You know, I'm not a fitness model. So the store at its peak made $120 million. This was that was a shock to me actually. That was a lot of money. Um, and the circulation of the of the catalog was about three million, which is huge when you consider printed media, right? I, I love how it. it says it appealed to both gay and straight audiences. Not according to the boys in the booth. <laughs> said uh, provided an escape from the AIDS crisis and widespread homophobia. So what they're trying to do, there's a group of three um, three directors or three producers are trying to get together and put together this story. It's going to be called All Men, and it's the international male story. It's de designed as a tribute to the catalog's unique aesthetic and cultural relevance. 
and uh, never seen before photographs, videos, interviews, behind the scenes, celebrities, et cetera, et cetera. And they're looking for people to donate um, for the film at, on the Film Collaborative, collaborative page. I, I saw this, and they, they said Carson Kressley, a few other people are involved uh, in the project. But it sounds to me like a gay film festival release. Oh, sure, sure. But I would do it. I would love to see it. I think it would be a fun step back in time and look back at, at uh, that, um, it's done right. It could be a fun. Remember Lauren at Deep Discount uh-huh. had us watch the movie about Scotty Bowers? Yeah. So I'm anticipating a, a documentary about international mail could potentially be kind of like the Scotty Bowers story, which is fascinating. You might not know. There might be details we don't know yet, but I would. It could would, be a great business story, too, because it really was. You, well, I mean, talk, twenty million in billings, and, and talk about just really targeting an audience and and serving up what they want and making money off it. I I often wondered why it went out of business, considering brick and mortar is not so hot right now. You'd think that they would bring it back. I love the end of that one paragraph you read before. For straight men and their female admirers, the catalog gave permission <laughs> to take fashion risks and enjoy a more carefree expression of sexuality <laughs> without threatening their masculinity and sexual appeal. I'm sorry if you're in the if you're thumbing through the international mail catalog. I will say I did a similar thing you did. I did order something. It was cheap. It was on a clearance. And um, so when I used to row and I was in shape, you wore a unisuit. Yep. And so they had these similar things to sleep in. They were supposed to be a little more loose in the uh, International Mail Catalog, so I ordered them. I think they were called Step-Ins or something. And yes, one, they yes. were called Step-Ins. One was blue and one was red, and I bought them, and the, the red one's still in the bag. Similar to you, I opened it up and put it on and screamed. La- I mean, it was the most atrocious thing. You could never w- be caught dead in it. I mean, you wouldn't want to be by yourself in this thing, walking around the house. Wait, the red one's still in its bag? <laughs> it's in my you should send it to these guys oh, for shit. for like inclusion in the wrote, documentary. I opened right? the blue one, and I forget who I even showed it. It might have been Matt at the time. Or so. It just busted. We both laughed. Couldn't, we were laughing so hard. Similar to your tank top thing. And you would never send it back. No. So, you know, quite frankly, it was a pretty good business model. <laughs> so if, if whoever bought the cheetah thong, you know, they had the cheetah yeah, thong. Yeah, cheetah thong, the onesies. Like, and then there was always ends. the holiday underwear. It was always kind of funny, the candy cane pouch or something. <laughs> yeah, you'd buy it and you'd be like, uh-oh, I better hide this away. Maybe I'll bring the step in for Garrett. I bet he'd wear it. <laughs> I, I saved that one in the package, though. I yeah, think that should be I'm going to bring it in. I just, now that I remind, I'm going to make a note of that. I think you, you, we should look at that. I should have brought it with note me. Note to self. Bring step in New for year, boys in the booth. In. Maybe the boys will both put them on and come out and model them. And step in. I'll put on anything. I don't care. Yeah, that, and that's going to boost our, that's going to boost those YouTube numbers through the roof. <laughs> you need to boost those YouTube numbers. All right, friends, we want everybody to enjoy the upcoming holidays. A big thank you to our Fort Worth, Texas fan for all these great candies and chocolates that we've been sent. We will, in fact, be sharing these and distributing them. Thank you. Thank you for being a listener and for uh, taking the time to do this. We really appreciate it. A big thanks to Deep Discount. Uh, last minute gift sale. Uh, Tim, is it Etta James for you? Etta James. Anything Etta James, you find a deep discount. There's a Blu ray of all her, throw the Montro from yep. Montro, all her performances, a DVD of all her songs. I recommended Gosford Park because it was written by Oscar winning screenwriter Julian Fellows, who also created the release of the week, which is Down Abbey. And I highly recommend that movie if you're, a down, if you're an Abbott. That was the nickname, by the way. If you're a Down Abbey fan, you're an Abbott. Oh, really? Abbott, yeah. Abbott fan. The Times would do that. Uh, don't text and drive. Arrive alive. Why don't you tell people about what we're going to do for? Oh, them? oh yeah. Sorry. We're on Wednesdays. So uh, since we're going to take a little bit of a break, we have some holiday programming coming up on Wednesdays. So there are going to be uh, two short shows, probably like twenty minutes a piece, maybe. So you get your unbuttoned, which is on Tuesdays, and you're going to get this little audio gem during the. Uh, we we were going to repurpose our old holiday specials from Sirius, but our producer said they sounded dated. But I thought that might have been fun. Dated. Dated. Yeah. So Census <laughs> Studios. So Census Studios closed on Wednesday for New Year's and for Christmas. Uh, we're yeah. going to we're going to do an old old school audio, right? Old old school audio because our other idea was dated. dated. <laughs> anyway, everybody, have a great holiday. Don't text and drive. Arrive alive. Uh, watch out for our audio shows as well, and we'll see you soon. It's The Focus Group with Tim Bennett and John Nash. Accessible on all platforms. Subscribe, like, and rate us on your platform of choice. Learn more at focusgroupradio.com.
That was a stunning focus group.